Welcome to our next unit on reduction and oxidation. In order to understand how reduction and oxidation work, we need to take a look at the meaning of the word the oxidation state. It's the apparent charge an atom would develop if the most electronegative element in the bond gained all the electrons. I'm going to work through a few examples to go through this definition. Let's consider carbon monoxide. So carbon bonded to oxygen. Now, carbon has uh, essentially four valence electrons. And from our bonding unit, you might recall it sets up something like this. And our oxygen, on the other hand, with six valence electrons, sets up like this. Now, of these two elements, when we take a look at electronegativity, oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.4 and carbon and electronegativity of 2.6. What that means then is in this bond between our two atoms that the all of those electrons that are there in that bond, let's identify those here and here, all of the electrons that are present in that region there, they essentially all belong to the oxygen. So oxygen gains two electrons and we say then that it has an oxidation state then of minus two, because it's gained those two electrons. Carbon has lost them and has developed an oxidation state of plus two. Let's look at another situation with carbon. So this molecule, um, I believe has this sort of shape from our bonding unit. Again, I'll show carbon's four electrons. There's one shared there, one shared with that hydrogen, and two with the oxygen. Um, the oxygen again with its six. And we'll put in the hydrogens here and here. Now in the bonding arrangement that exists up here, oxygen wins this tug of war for electrons. So that oxygen develops an oxidation state then of minus two again, because it takes all of those electrons in the battle between carbon and hydrogen, carbon wins. So carbon keeps its own two plus carbon gains those two. So carbon has lost two and gained two. Its oxidation state here is zero. And the hydrogens, each having lost one, develop a plus one charge each, or a plus one oxidation state each. So we can see elements can have different oxidation states. It's not just one particular number. In my last example, we'll take a look at this chemical. It's called propane. So we have three carbons arranged in sort of a chain with our hydrogens surrounding it. We'll begin by showing uh, each hydrogen brings one electron to the bond. I'll take a look at that carbon on the end here with its four. So one, two, three, four. And likewise, this carbon on the end, one, two, three, and four. And finally, that carbon then in the middle with one, two, three, and four. Now, taking a look at the carbon here on the end, um, it essentially will gain the three electrons from the hydrogen, but it's, in this bond, it's gonna be a dead tie between these two in terms of the pull on electrons. So carbon down here gains three electrons and has an oxidation state of minus three. Now that's a similar case down at this end. This carbon will also have a minus three oxidation state. The hydrogens will all lose their electrons and develop a plus one oxidation state. Now the carbon in the middle, these two pulls will be ties. So as a result, this carbon is not going to lose those or gain those electrons. Those will essentially remain with one. Now the carbon in the middle has gained two electrons from hydrogen and as a result develops a minus two charge. So what I wanted to show in this example is carbon can have different oxidation states within the same compound. Now, rather than doing Lewis dot diagrams for every single substance, we've developed a set of rules. And here are those rules. 
So any element has an oxidation state of zero. So we'll quickly go through what these mean. So if I have something like Fe, its oxidation state is zero. If I have something like O2, again, its oxidation state will essentially be zero. So I'll write those in red above here. Let's go to the next group. Oxidation states for a charged ion. So suppose we have an equation, Fe with a two plus charge. That means that its oxidation state then is plus two. It's worth noting here, the way we write charge and the way we write oxidation states are slightly different. A charge is written as with a number followed by the plus minus sign, whereas oxidation states are written with the plus minus sign first. And that's an important feature. Group one metals are all one plus. So that would mean that if we had something like lithium or sodium in our equation combined with another substance, we would expect them to have a plus one charge. And anything in group two, for instance, say something like calcium or magnesium, we would expect those to have oxidation states when combined with other substances of plus two. Hydrogen is plus one except in a metal. So when we take a look at uh, a metal combined with hydrogen, for instance, say lithium with hydrogen, we know that lithium has a plus one charge. In order to balance this, we know that the hydrogen must have a minus one charge when combined with a metal. Otherwise, hydrogen is always plus one. And we could see that in our examples up above. For instance, when we had that compound, um, C3H8, um, we knew that the charge on the hydrogens, because they lost their electrons, was always plus one. Oxygen is two minus, unless it's in a peroxide. So when we have a compound, say something like H2O, we know that the hydrogen has an oxidation state of plus one. Oxygen will have an oxidation state of minus two. We also saw that in our example earlier, where we had CH2O, that that oxygen in that compound had a minus two. The exception to this rule, however, is when we have a peroxide. And a peroxide, hydrogen peroxide, H2O2, hydrogens have a charge of plus one, and in this situation, oxygen is minus one to balance. Halogens are minus one. So typically that would mean we would expect chlorine, fluorine, iodine, that these would all have oxidation states of minus one. The exception comes when it's bonded to a more electronegative element. So if, for instance, I have oxygen combining with chlorine, we already know from the rule up above that oxygen tends to be minus two. That would make chlorine, in this case, plus one. Because oxygen is a more electronegative element, so that changes our rule. And the rule that I've been using here is this one. The sum of the oxidation states must equal that of the overall charge of the molecule. So you can see that in the case that I used up above here, I have minus two for the oxygens, and I have two chlorines, which I determined at plus one each, equaling the overall charge, which was zero, which is understood when there's no number present. Let's take a look at another example of this, let's say um, we have the compound nitrate. Let's say I don't know what the oxidation state then is of my nitrogen, so I'll just call it X. So using this rule, I can say nitrogen's oxidation state is X, and I've got three oxygens at minus two each, and that must equal the overall charge which is negative one. Solving for this then, I get X is equaling plus five. So that would be the oxidation state of nitrogen in this compound. Let's apply this to a few other examples. In these situations, I want to determine the oxidation state of the element that's highlighted in the red. So I don't know what to use here for oxygen, uh, for phosphorus, I'll call it X. 
I've got x plus. Now, chlorine is usually minus 1, so I'll put that in, and the overall charge here is 0. So as I've all, I can say that phosphorus is using a plus 3 oxidation state in this compound. Again, I'm going to let the unknown be x, so I've got phosphorus, 4 oxygens at minus 2 apiece, equaling 3 minus, Solving then for x, I get x is equaling plus 5. So in this compound, phosphorus has a plus 5 oxidation. Now in this one, let's take a look at uh, carbon. Now we've seen this one before. So I'll let the oxidation state of carbon be x. So I've got three carbons and eight hydrogens at plus 1 apiece. The total is 0 because there's no evidence of a charge here. So that gives me 3x plus 8, and that gives me that the oxidation state then of the carbon is minus 8 thirds. Now, at first glance, that might be a little bit puzzling. How can one gain or lose fractions of electrons? But remember that this particular one represents an average. We can recall that from our example up above that the oxidation states of carbon are different. So there's a couple of them that are minus 3 and one of them minus 2. So what you're getting here is an average. In my last example, I want to show a little trick in solving oxidation states. So I want to figure out iron here. What's going to be different instead of looking at individual atoms is I'm going to remember that some of these polyatomic ions have particular charges. So ammonium is plus 1. Uh, sulfate is an uh, oxidation state of minus 2 or a charge of minus 2 for that whole uh, species, and water, H2O, is essentially a neutral substance. So I'm going to treat these as groups of atoms with a, a charge. So I've got two ammoniums at plus one. I've got my unknown six waters at zero, and two sulfates at minus two, and the total zero. So simplifying this a bit, I have two plus my unknown 6 times 0, and here I have plus negative 4, S equals 0, and then solving for the oxidation state of iron, I get plus 2. This skill of determining oxidation states is a really a necessary skill to move forward in this unit. Thanks for watching.